remember when I told you yes I was eager to do my best Yes people Obedience Looking out in the audience Big shout out to everybody loving and feeling the vibes I was eager This is the great sounds of Esther Sings and of course she is joining us live and direct right here on the big bad station big shout out to everybody sending lots of love lots of blessings with yours truly dj cat the catalyst and of course we have a very special guest joining us live and direct right here on the big bad station so of course esther you there Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Anytime, anytime. So you know what, sis? It's always great to start at the point of who you are and tell us a little bit about your journey. Okay. Um, I'm Esther, Esther Antoine. I've been calling me Esther Sims. Um, I love things from the time I was like, maybe like, Five, six years old, you know, going to church and everything, raising an Adventist home. My father used to, you know, play his guitar, strum his guitar, and my sister and I used to sing to, you know, his strumming. Yeah. And, um, but I believe I was the one with the bigger voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The biggest mouth, yes. <laughs> yes. So, um, uh, you know, we, we went to church, and I, I guess a lot of um, our singing was done at church, you know, when, you know, we were young. And then um, me, as I got a little older, yeah. I took it to, um, I took it to, like, um, I took it to, like, the hotels, and I took it to some stages, you know, so I did better as I got older. Okay. You know, and... Um, I came to the United States and um, I met this producer and then I started working with him at his studio and here I am today. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, you know, you spoke there of, you know, going into hotels and so on. How did you find that? Because I've heard that it's quite difficult. Well, at the time I was in a band. Okay. You know, I was in a band so it was kind of a little easier. You know, they had gigs, I, you know to do at the hotels and then I followed, you know, I was one of the vocalists, you know, in the band. Yeah. You know, so it was kind of easy for me. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I hear that. And then when you went to the production studio, did you write your own music and kind of produce your own tunes with him? Well, yes. I wrote all my music on my own. I put it into writing whatever I was feeling during my period of that time. You know, I put it in, you know, in paper and also, um, you know, stuff that when I look around me, what I see, I also put it on paper. Yeah. yeah so um, a lot of my work was done on my own. Yes. Wow. And, you know, you've, you've created some amazing songs, some amazing um, vibrations, but really thought provoking as well. Some of the tunes that you have is You Left Me Broken, Surviving. Um, there's so many different tunes, different vibrations that I've heard you do, um, such as Ceasefire, Do My Best. Tell us about those tunes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, um, Ceasefire, I think about Ceasefire. Ceasefire is about, you know, like, oh, yes, it's, it's crazy as to what's happening here, you know, in this world today. It's also um, the last song that I did also. Um, they are all about, you know, the craziness and then um, the shooting and the killing and the wars and, the, you know, it's, it's, it's like too much killing, especially on our people, mm -hmm. you know, so I had to put it into writing, you know, uh, um, do my best. I, I, I think I had to do my best. In fact, I do my best all the time, but then do my best. <laughs> <laughs> do my best was the song, you know, when I met, you know, this special person, I wanted to let him know that I, you know, I'm going to do my best. I'll stick by him. I'll be here. You know, yeah. I'm not going anywhere, you know? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I hear that. I hear that. But how did you find writing those tunes? Like I said, a lot of your tunes are very thought provoking. So how, was it like a therapy for you as you were writing those tunes? 
Oh yes, oh yes, because because uh, I went through you know uh, to flip aneurysms in my brain, a plate in my spine. You know, it's a lot of stuff that was that's going on with me medically, yeah. and then you know I just had to you know write um, write because. Writing did something for me, especially karaoke. I use karaoke as another form of therapy. Yeah. You know, so um yeah, writing did, did a lot for me. I just I it was just it's very easy for me to write because it's I speak about what's going on, what's going on in my life, you know, what's happening around me. So it became very easy. Mm, I hear that. So how do you go about writing your songs? Because I'm always interested to hear how an artist <laughs> or a poet, you know, they start how they start writing a song and how it becomes an actual song. So how does it work for you? Do you freestyle it, write it down? How does it work? Oh, okay. What I do is I get the rhythm. I sit in my house with my pen and paper. I listen to it. I think of what I want to write about. And then um, I, I, I put it on paper. I... I sing towards the rhythm, you know, and then um, I because my memory, what what the what happened to me is my memory. I forget stuff a lot because of the aneurysm. Yeah. So what I do is I record myself. <laughs> I record myself, and then afterwards I go back to it. Okay. You know, I I listen to it and see if there are any mistakes and stuff, and then I take it to the studio, and this is where you know. I, I get my song produced. Wow, you know what, I like that, big up yourself, you know, because no matter what you're faced with, you just keep on doing what you love. Yes, I yes, love that. yes, thank you. 100%. So, when it comes to your music now, people are already messaging, and they want to know, have you got an EP coming out, an album coming out, they want to know what kind of songs you do, what kind of genre, they want to know a lot. <laughs> okay, I... Um, I do reggae. I love reggae. I believe reggae is something that I'm going to continue singing, even if I have to change in a way where I sing more spiritually, you know, I still would use reggae because um, I, I don't know. It's, 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 it's something about me and reggae. <laughs> it's something about me and reggae. So um, I, I do have... Um, a lot of music coming out. I have a lot of music coming out, you know, so, um, which I'm working on right now. Yeah. Oh, and um, I also I also get um, got invited to play um, in, in bands. Actually, I have a gig to do, I think, coming up next month, you know, to some um, festival they have. You know, so I believe I'm getting somewhere with my music. It's, it's doing pretty good. I hear you know? that. I hear that. We've got um, quite a few different listeners locked in. They want to know a few different things. So the first thing is they want to. They're asking, how are you finding it being a female in the industry? Oh my God, it's it's very difficult. It mm. is hard. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I have to beg. I have to like reach out to people. It's very hard. Yeah. You know, and um. It's, it's, it's a lot you have to do to, to, to get, you know, to be known as a woman, as a female artist. You have to come good because it's like it's so accustomed to hearing male artists yeah. that it's like not really a norm to really have a reggae, you know, reggae artist. And I'm really trying because I really want to put my music out there. I want people to hear me, you know, to, to listen to my story, you know, as to what I have to give out. Because I believe I have a lot to give out, and I, I and, and I believe a lot of people like right now are really um, gravitating to my music. So I think that's a plus for me. So I've I've, I've gotten a lot of fans, you know, and um, you know more people are listening to my music. So this is why I have, you know, I was rewarded with um, the Spotify plaques and the iTunes plaque because. The people out there who really love my music and really, um, is re really cheering me on with my music. Yeah, hundred percent. I did see the picture. I was like, "Whoa, you go, girl!" <laughs> <laughs> yes, thanks to you two for streaming my music, playing my music. <laughs> <laughs> anytime, anytime. Um, so another question. Um, I believe this is from a young person actually. They're asking, 
what advice could you they're saying what advice could you give me i want to start writing songs but i'm i'm always getting brain fog i don't really know what to write what would you say mm -hmm. i would say just write what you think just keep writing anything you come up with like anything like an idea any little thing that comes up you write it and then you go back to it you know yeah. and then you, you just um you just write down what you think as mm -hmm. long as you write and you go back to what you you know what you wrote and you believe well it is something you want to stick to but just stick to you know like just stick to what you want to do and 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 then you're going to get to where you you want to go you know yeah i hear that i hear that lots of Different artists do have brain fog, but it comes in time. Is that is that right? <laughs> <laughs> it comes in time. I'm telling you, yes. Sometimes it does because there are times when sometimes I'm blank. Yeah. Sometimes when I just go blank. I, I just don't know what to write about. Mm. You know. And then when I look around me, it's like, okay, maybe I should write about the trees. Maybe I should write about. You know, the, 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 the young man I see walking down the street and why is he barefeeted? Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe I should write about, you know, um, my mom. You know, it's just so many things that we could write about and put it in music and to make it make sense. I you understand? That. Yeah, 100%. Um, mm -hmm. Another listener is saying um, they know that you're based in or are from St. Lucia. Um, how do you mm -hmm. find singing reggae in a predominant soca and calypso country? <laughs> <laughs> I see you've, you've been doing your research and homework. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 Um, we do still have, you know, reggae going on. I just wish it was a bigger thing in our country. Yeah. You know, and then we don't have to really get all those international reggae artists coming to our country. You should. We should more use our own. Mm -hmm. You know. But um, I believe that's one of the things we kind of lack in because I think we we give out too much to the um, international artists and not our own. Okay. So this is one of the things I would love to see change in my country. Yeah, that would be amazing. I mean, why do you think that is? Is it because... Oh gosh. I'm sorry, Harlan. I didn't hear you. Don't worry, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> it seems like they're going crazy out there, man. The sirens are going mental. Yeah, that is New York. <laughs> gosh, gosh. So why do you think that is, sis? Do you think it's because they want to bring in a bigger crowd? Or what? what is it that... They don't want to go to St. Lucian artists. What do you think that is? I believe maybe they do not have enough confidence in our, you know, in our artists. Okay. They believe that maybe we can't do it. Mm. You know, and they, 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 they believe like having international artists is, is better than having their local artists. Okay. Which is a bad thing. Yeah. You know, I think they should give us the chance and really put up shows and pay us to do what you know what we love because we really do have some good reggae artists it's emotional that's true you know yeah for mm -hmm. real i hear that and to be honest with you you're not the first person from st lucia to be saying this um there's a good there's an <laughs> artist that i know called natty conqueror and he's always saying it <laughs> he's always saying well, natty conqueror, yes natty conqueror i know him we spoke yeah i'm hoping that one day we should do a collab together yeah but you know i believe I believe reggae shouldn't be rushed. I believe um, we have to sometimes because I, I practice my voice and I try to I try to the craft because it's a craft mm. and, 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 and it's the way you do it. It just don't happen overnight. You understand? And we just we just can't get fans like that and we just can't, you know, get streams like that. And it, it it's work. Mm. It's a lot of work. You know, so I will not stay and lay down and say, Well, Okay, well, nobody is 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 uh, promoting me, and nobody is is you know trying to you know put me forward. I have to do the legwork. That's it, hundred percent. Just like how I I got you, just like how I got you, just like how I I met a lot of um other radio announcers, and 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 I had to call TV stations in my country. Mm. I had to ask for interviews. You have to do the legwork. It, it will not come to you. It's That's not it. easy. I hear that a hundred percent and so that goes to my next question actually which is about what advice can you give up-and-coming artists up-and-coming up-and-coming people in general you know just about music or 
promotion and networking. What would you say about that? Yeah, I just think that they should really, um, you know, help out artists who is really trying to to make it, like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like um, we we really need to um, like come together as one and then help out each other. You mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, I I believe we need more unity. Maybe my next song would be about that. Yeah. Unity. <laughs> I hear that. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, yeah. I just think that we need to come together and and help out each other because it's not easy out there. The same way that um, the announcers can help us and stream our, our music and stuff. The same way we can come and help them out a little bit. You know, maybe even give them a little change. Maybe tell them, look, hold that. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey. Because we all have to eat and we all have to, you know. That is when you know when I make it big. Sister Catalyst, you're gonna make it big too. <laughs> oh, blessings, blessings <laughs> every time. Yes, yes, yes. But you're not you're not wrong though, because it is a very difficult industry. It's like very clicky, you know, same artists get picked, same people, same promoters, everybody's sort of same. So it'll yes. be nice but if we, we know what reached out. You know what I realize? And what I realize is the artists who are who are already big out there are the ones they really really promote the ones they really play on the radio station mm -hmm. they don't really focus on the upcoming artists how are we going to make it if the the radio announcers do not play our music that's it if they do not help us out in playing our music all they do is play those that are already big already maybe some that are really old and need to go sit down <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah they really need to give us a chance that's it definitely so i hope more and more people do play up and coming artists i mean for me personally i think it's a really important process of music i mean it's great to play you know the old the old school artists but it's always a blessing to play a lot of the new school and obviously new artists so that we can hear what you have to say <laughs> of course of course yes yes of course i mean especially if you know well that that person that's singing that song or you know that 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 um the music has a message in it. You know That's, what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I try to put a lot of my music with messages where somebody could could um learn 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 you know, learn from it. Yeah. You understand? Where even me singing a song they say, Oh, okay, I hate in her voice. I could hear she's hurting mm -hmm. or I could hear she's happy. Or I could tell she wants to tell somebody something in her music. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You 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 want to you want to be able to do that. And I don't think I see myself singing any kind of, um, you know, those the, the, um those those kind of music where it's cursing and all of that. Mm. I don't see myself doing that at all. Yeah. Do you think that's a, a part of it in the sense that, as I don't know nowadays, I suppose. We're more into the jumpy up music and not really message music as as much as it was say back then you know like 70s 80s even some of the 90s do you think that's right. the issue? Lot, yeah i believe i really what you're saying is true because i believe a lot of people nowadays um um the kind of music that is played now yeah is, i think is garbage okay and um well, I'm sorry to say that, but you know, I, I like the I like the honesty. You didn't even hold back. I like that. <laughs> it's garbage. I like that. <laughs> right, because what we had from before was real music, mm. real music, real reggae music. It's like even the real big reggae artists nowadays. It's like. They start singing garbage, uh -uh. and I'm like, wow! Mm. I'm like, wow! And I and I'm there with my pen and paper, and I'm okay. I want to write about this. I want to write about that. I want to be able to put out a message, you know, send it to the kids, send mm. it to women, send it to you know people out there, you know, where yeah. I can get that support. But then when you listen to all the support you get from people singing garbage. And and skinning out and mm. and cursing and all of that is crazy. And these are the people who come up with the big awards and and everything like that. So the industry is is crazy with the industry. Yeah, it is. 
It is. I mean, for me personally, I love messages. I love hearing what people have to say. That's why I do interviews, because I'm really interested in people's stories. I really want to know what's in their heads, you know? Um, (laughs) You know what I mean? You you, want to know everything, right? Well, not everything. (laughs) Not everything. Some things you can keep to yourself, but yeah, most things. I like to know the story. But remember, curiosity kills the cat catalyst. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's it that's it <laughs> but yeah I think it's really important that we have messages within our music but I mean what would you say to a young person that wants to do you know the music that you say is garbage what would you say because that seems to be the in thing and they see that as a maybe a quick fix to some of their money issues what would you say sis well I would just tell them plenty you singing garbage Mm. I mean, what are you bringing out for the young people, you know, that's coming, you know, or for the younger kids and stuff like that? I mean, yeah, it's a quick fix. It's, it's quick money. It's, it is, you know, but um, I just believe we need to just cool our heads and we just need to do what's right so the younger ones can see <clears throat> and then, um, you know, continue that trend because if it's that trend that we're going to keep, it's not going to be a good you know, good thing for the future um, artists coming up because we're going to destroy our reggae music and we're going to destroy, you know, a lot of music out there that is good. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. I hear that. And who inspired you, sis? Because I feel like you're a very eclectic artist. You have different inspirations. So I want to know who inspired you? (laughs) My father inspired me. Okay. My father, my father, my father. Well, I miss my father because my father used to be um, a gentleman who played his guitar a lot. He had a yeah. big mouth, he said, like me. He <laughs> sings a lot. He would stay, he, he would be here and then you would hear him in England. That's how loud he is. <laughs> he had a big voice. Yeah. He had a really, really big, vo- big voice and everybody would hear his smile when he's coming home at night, strumming his guitar and singing. Nice. You know, so he's my best inspiration. Wow. Yes. I like that. I like that still. Big up me daddy still. Every day. (laughs) (laughs) Big him up. So what's next for you, sis? What can we expect from you? What can we, as the listeners and the lovers of you, expect? Well, you guys should expect better music, good music, more plaques, (laughs) and, um, yes, more communication and, um, you know, everything good. Um, maybe also I, I expect to be doing more shows, to be on shows, to be on, um, you know, more interviews and whatever. But I have a couple songs I have, you know, I'm working on that I believe that you guys are really going to like. Yeah, I hear that. I hear that. I, I feel like big things are coming your way, 100%. Oh, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> and how can people book you? How can they go about getting in touch with you? Okay, you can find me on all the digital platforms. You can go on YouTube, Spotify. Um, if you have an iPhone, you could find me on iTunes. You know, just you could even Google my name. Just Google Esther Sings or Google Esther Antoine or go to www.esthersings5.org. You could find me there also. So yes. you're everywhere. You are everywhere. I am everywhere. I wrote two <laughs> books. You can go on Amazon and you're going to find my books over there. You know, so um, I'm everywhere. Just pull me up. Nice. And what are your books called, just in case people would like to read about your journey? My book is about me surviving a brain aneurysm. Yeah. And my book is also, the other book is about... Um, <clears throat> my baby that died at five months old wow. you know so yeah. i wrote about it wow. so you guys can go over there and pull it up and um support me by buying my books wow first of all sis i'm sorry to hear about that and it's really yeah. i don't know if it's if it's um courageous is the right word but wow you wrote about it and you sharing that story is really powerful thank you Oh yes, I had to put it down on paper because you know what, this is why a lot of the music that I sing, they're very serious, they're kind of serious Mm -hmm. and as music that does a lot for me, you know, because I've gone through it and then 
you know, I just feel like I just need to put it down, you know, so people could know who I am, what I went through. I'm not hiding anything, you know, I'm like a uh, uh, crystal ball. <laughs> <laughs> you can see through me. Yeah. You know, so, uh, yeah, just Google me and then you're going to find me. I hear that. I hear that. And, you know, it's only right before we end the interview to ask you to sing a little something. Would you be up for that? <laughs> yes, I will sing a little something. Hey, when you're ready, sis. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when I told you, yes, I was eager to do my best. And looking in experience, looking out in the audience. Remember when I told you, yes, I was eager to do my best. <laughs> That's all you get, sister. <laughs> <laughs> I like that still. And, you know, sis, is there any final thoughts, final words you want to say to the people and the listeners out there? Yes, I would like to tell all the up upcoming artists, don't be discouraged. Because, you know, life is something else. Look, I'm going through something myself. You know, even even with my lyrics, sometimes I forget my lyrics because of my aneurysms. I'm going through stuff, but I never let it discourage me. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? Definitely. I get scared when I have to go and perform on stages. You know, because it's like, okay, I might forget the lyrics and stuff like that, which it happens to me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But never let anything discourage you. Do what you love. You know, um, mingle with people who have your back. Yeah. You know, I'm just trying to write positive music, you know, so, you know, you could put out um, positive things out there to the young generation coming up. I hear that, 100%. And, you know, I want to say thank you to you, sis, for doing this interview with me. We're going to do a live interview as well on Instagram sometime. I'm definitely going to plan that in. Oh, yeah. um, 100%. Oh, yeah. I, would I would love that. And thank you for having me. You're such a doll. Sometimes when I look at you, I just want to squeeze your face. <laughs> Wow. You know what? Thank maybe you one so time. Much. I appreciate you. I appreciate you, sis. And maybe one time I'll see you here in the UK. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. That would be nice. Yeah, man. Definitely. <laughs> More love, sis. Have a blessed rest of the day, for real. Okay. Thank you. Anytime. Yeah. Speak soon. Bye bye. Bye. Yes. Okay. Bye bye. Yes, people, please do go out there. Go and support Esther Sings, okay? Go and show us some love. As you can tell, a beautiful soul, okay? A definite happy person. And we're keeping the vibes going right here on the Big Vibe Station each and every time. Big